hello and welcome everyone today we are discussing about dengue dengue is an acute viral illness caused by rna virus of family flaviviridae and spread by aedes aegypti mosquitoes we have learned earlier that hepatitis c virus is also from flaviviridae family dengue virus is an arthropod borne virus that includes four different serotypes 1 2 3 and 4 In the world, two and half billion people reside in dengue endemic regions, and roughly 400 million infections occurring per year, with a mortality rate surpassing 5 to 20 percent in some areas. Dengue is classified into uncomplicated and severe dengue. They are dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever, and dengue shock syndrome. It is a severe flu-like infection that involves individuals of all age groups, including infants, children, adolescents, and adults. Transmission among human beings occurs by mosquito Aedes aegypti and chiefly occurs during the rainy season. The proposed etiologies for dengue virus infection are virus replication, primarily in macrophages. Direct skin infection by virus, immunological and chemical mediated mechanism. induced by host viral interaction dengue virus gains entry into the host organism through skin following an infected mosquito bite humoral cellular and innate host immune responses are implicated in progression of illness and the more severe clinical signs occur following the rapid clearance of virus from the body hence most severe clinical presentation including infection does not correlate with high viral load alteration in endothelial microvascular permeability and thromboregulatory mechanisms lead to an increased loss of protein and plasma thrombocytopenia may be related to alteration in megakaryocytopoiesis manifested by infection of human hematopoietic cells and compromised progenital cell growth this may cause platelet dysfunction damage or depletion leading to significant hemorrhages in the dengue fever onset of symptoms is characterized by biphasic high grade fever lasting for 3 days to 1 week severe headache mainly retroverbal lassitude myalgia and painful joint metallic taste appetite loss diarrhea vomiting and stomach ache are other manifestations dengue is also known as break bone fever because it is associated with myalgia and pain in joints the initial rash is a result of capillary dilatation and present as a transient facial flushing erythema typically occurring before and during first 1 to 2 days of fever the second rash is seen at 3 days to 1 week following the fever and presents as a asymptomatic macula papular or morbiliform eruption bleeding episodes are infrequently seen in dengue fever although epistaxis and gingival bleeding substantial menstruation petechi purpura gastrointestinal tract hemorrhage can occur dengue hemorrhagic fever is frequently seen during secondary dengue infection acute onset febrile phase is characterized by high grade fever lasting from 2 days to 1 week and hemorrhagic episodes at least one of the following forms like petechi purpura ecchymosis epistaxis gingival and mucosal bleeding git or injection site hematemesis and or melena positive tourniquet test and hepatomegaly Laboratory parameters include thrombocytopenia where platelet count is less than 1 lakh per cubic mm. The clinical course of DHF is characterized by three phases: febrile, leakage and convalescent. The fever stage persists for 2 days to 1 week and then drops to normal or subnormal levels when the patient either convalesces or advances to plasma leakage phase. High plasma escape cases are marked by frank shock with low pulse pressure cyanosis hepatomegaly pleural and pericardial effusion and ascites 
bradycardia, confluent petechial rashes, erythema and pallor are seen during this phase. Third is Dengue Shock Syndrome. It is defined as Dengue hemorrhagic fever accompanied by unstable pulse, narrow pulse pressure, restlessness, cold and calmy skin and circumoral cyanosis. Progressively worsening shock, multi-organ damage and disseminated intravascular coagulation account for a high mortality rate associated with DSS. The patient promptly recovers with supportive therapy. Now let's learn about the laboratory diagnosis of dengue. A decreased number of white blood cells that is leukopenia and accompanied by decreased number of platelet count that is thrombocytopenia and metabolic acidosis are the initial changes on laboratory examination. Virus segregation in cell culture, nucleic acid demonstration by PCR and serological detection of viral antigens such as NS1 or particular antibodies are the preferred assays help in diagnosis of dengue infection. This picture shows positivity of antigen and antibody and its interpretation. In primary acute infection, either NS1 is positive or NS1 or IgM both are positive or only IgM is positive. If all three are positive, NS1, IgM and IgG, then we can consider that it is a secondary acute infection. If NS1 and IgG is positive and IgM is negative, then also it is secondary acute infection. But only IgM and IgG is positive, NS1 is negative, then we have to consider IgG slash IgM ratio for accurate diagnosis. If this ratio is less than 1.1 then we can consider it as a primary acute infection and if the IgG slash IgM ratio is more than 1.1 then we can consider it as a secondary acute infection and if only IgG is positive then it suggests the past infection with dengue virus. Smear study in dengue. In acute infection on the smear Leukopenia with reactive lymphocytes, monocytopenia and thrombocytopenia are seen. Reactive lymphocytes are those whose nucleus will become bigger and irregular and cytoplasm will increase and will become bluer. In recovery phase, lymphocytes starts to normalize first which is followed by platelet count. Predictive factors for severe dengue. Clinical features observed to have a positive association with severe dengue includes lethargy, persistent vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, hepatomegaly, severe bleeding, pleural effusion and ascites, significantly high ALT and AST, hypoproteinemia, hypoalbuminemia, proteinuria and elevated creatine kinase, lactate dehydrogenase and blood urea nitrogen have been seen to be positively associated with severe dengue. Cytokine interleukin-10, IL-8, SVCAM-1, IP-10 have also been shown to positively associated with severity. Now let's learn about the management. There are no definitive curative medications for dengue. Management is mainly supportive. Judicious fluid resuscitation during the critical phase of dengue is a cornerstone of management. Crystallides are the initial fluid of choice and antibiotic of choice is paracetamol. Organ involvement in severe dengue should be carefully looked for and managed. A secondary hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis is a potentially fatal complication of dengue that needs to be recognized because in such cases, specific management with steroids or intravenous immunoglobulin may improve outcomes. These are the references for this video. Hope you like it. Thank you. Bye. See you in the next video.